I think it's a question of return on investment, if I can put it like that. In terms of the research needed to bring these materials to the marketplace, this is very time consuming and therefore cost consuming because construction materials are designed to be used for 40, 100 years and this involves a lot of basic understanding and testing. So you have to really be able to multiply these solutions on a worldwide basis. I think the second aspect is that um, we see today that already uh, about 80% of cement consumption is taking place in what we used to call developing, now emerging countries. And um, these, are, these are all countries which have a similar aspects in terms of climate, in terms of geology. What we uh, looked at in our first phase was to see that these calcite clays, the type that is really suitable for this product, is really abundantly available in this tropical, subtropical zone where most of the growth and demand is expected to come uh, in the next few decades. Uh, in fact, uh, what we see in these regions is that, in fact, there is likely to be shortage of limestone, which is currently the, um, making up about 80% of cement production. I think we see already that um, work on cement and concrete is already very internationalized. Typically, if you attend a conference, you know, there are people from uh, 50 plus countries uh, attending these. And um, we are interacting already with people from many countries around the world. Um, however, I think what we're very privileged to have here in Switzerland is um, very sophisticated equipment, uh, very good basis of, of understanding on a theoretical level. And what we've already seen from our collaboration with Cuba over the last six years is that this uh, underlying knowledge really helps in the field. Because instead of just testing things by trial and error, which you basically don't have time to do, you can identify you know, what's the interesting route to follow um, from a, just from an underlying chemistry perspective, what's likely to work, what's not likely to work, and therefore to really accelerate the pace of implementation. I mean, when I think when we started in Cuba, um, I won't say we were completely on the wrong track, but I mean, we had ideas that proved to be um, completely unworkable. And it took about two or three years to really uh, see what were, the, what were the viable routes. And um, this is very well supported by, as I say, basic chemistry, basic physics, and uh, characterization equipments, which we're very privileged to have here in, in Switzerland. Estimations based on previous calculations by the International Energy Agency. And what this has shown is that there's really a limitation of materials that can substitute for clinker. Most widely used today, we have slag, fly ash, and limestone. The potential of these materials is already very largely exploited. And therefore, in terms of continuing to reduce CO2, we can't go much further with those materials because they're available in shortest, short supplies. If we can tap into this potential for calcine clays, which are very abundantly available, and in fact the only materials that are available in the quantities we need, we estimate you can save conservatively about 300 million tons of CO2 per year, which to put it in some kind of context, this is the kind of emissions you would have from a kind of medium-sized country outside Europe. For example, it's two-thirds the annual emissions of Brazil. It, it, it's an evolution rather than a revolution. I think this is important because, you know, you find evolution, this can be accepted on the market. It's not like we're um, talking about completely different materials. We're talking about a new packaging of technologies that are previously known, that can be produced with existing equipment. This is very important because particularly in developing countries, they don't have either the competences 
or the capital to set up radically different uh, kind of uh, materials. So I think um, we've seen going back 100, 150 years that there is no competitor to Portland cement clinker as the basic chemistry. We have materials like calcium aluminate cements, but these make up a tiny proportion of the market, about one thousandth or one ten thousandth of the production of Portland cement clinker. And something produced in those quantities is going to have negligible impact on CO2 reduction. So this is really why I think we have to look for uh, solutions that are really viable from a technological, from a um, cost and from an equipment and knowledge perspective, rather than uh, dreaming up very exotic solutions, which um, just in terms of the minerals available worldwide are not going to be viable.